Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Enter the Ether, the apparently official community Ooh. podcast of the <laughs> upcoming third-person MOBA ethereal Clash of Souls. I'm your host, the Magus. Joining me, as always, is the official friend and co-host, Jelly Knees. How you doing, Jelly? Well, I'm officially doing well now that we are official as the official community podcast, right? <laughs> yeah, that kind of that kind of threw me off when they made their announcement for the last uh, in, in the Ethereal Discord. They tagged us as the community podcast. I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm, great. Not, I'm, not, I'm not mad at it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Clearly, we've been we're going to use it to our advantage. The official yeah. podcast of the community, right? Like, I'll take it. Yeah, I'll absolutely. And now they're going to go back into their Discord and change the message to say non-official. And this is just going to be a fluke episode. I guarantee it. <laughs> Everyone's going to be like, Skifter, what did you do? <laughs> I think it was Sinus actually, that, that would time. Be Sinus that... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, great. We're good. <laughs> official. It happened. March of the Penguins. Morgan Freeman. We're good. That's all it took. All right. Right on. <laughs> so uh, there wasn't really a whole lot of news um, except for, you know, they announced in our last podcast that... uh that they're going to be doing a special live stream talking about the jungle with a special guest, which we still don't know who that special guest is going to be. So this week, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about what we think, um, some predictions for the jungle, as well as uh, how they can monetize the game. Uh, so I think they have a lot of monetization options that they can do without being um, standard, I guess. So let's get right into it. Jelly. You are the tinfoil titan. You have the most theories out of anybody <laughs> ever about anything ethereal related. So, uh, what do you got? Oh, God. The jungle's going to be a wild place, man. I mean, we've already confirmed that there's going to be 36 camps on the map total. That there's going to be 18 per side, technically. And two of those 18 are shared on both sides. So, they're kind of splitting the map in half. Um... So that's a big thing. The fact that there's that many camps. Granted, we have four junglers to split them up with. But still, that many camps is huge. But because of that, we have four buffs that they've already mentioned. We have the Wyverns. We have Atropos. We have the Obelisk. We have the Cannons. We have the Skungle. We have the Open Camps. We have the Regular Camps. We Literally, like, it just spirals from there. And clearly, I've had right. some, thought, um, some thought process on all of these. So a lot of objectives, yeah. And, yeah. Like, and the portals themselves to, to the lanes, that's going to be a bit of an objective. Like, you're going to have to have oversight and control of those. I'm really curious to see if you're going to be able to spawn camp those in some form. That if I am yeah, the yeah. fed Malaya and I just sit on the other side of the portal just waiting and I see the Talos come running out and I'm just like, hey, and just kill him, right? That's going to feel terrible. There's got to be some... If you're experienced with the game, then you're going to know when people are going to want to rotate and that's the time that you're going to camp that uh that spawn point and just ambush them as they're coming through exactly so it's that by itself is a huge part of the game that's going to have to be figured out and managed i'd guess if it became a problem they'd probably put some kind of protection around that like once you walk through you get a second where you can look around and kind of make a choice of whether or not right. to go back through but even then that's it it will be something they have to figure out throughout the alpha i'm sure but camp locations, we've seen general uh, the the general camp layouts and things like that in the spotlights. And I mean, overall, they look fine. They're semi small. So I think we're only going to have those handful of, of jungle minions that we've seen. We saw the lizard ones, I think. I think those right. are the only ones that we've seen officially. And we don't even know if those were just placeholders or if those are actually the jungle minions either. Um, but overall, what do you think of the, the general, like small camps, I guess I should call them. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what they're going to be. I do. Uh, they, they talked about before, as far as jungle camps go, uh, that they'll be dark souls inspired and that they'll be skill based, which I really hope they can still go with that because I like that idea of if you know how the jungle camps work and you know how to dodge, then pretty much anybody can clear that camp without taking damage. Mm -hmm. So it would really depend more on who has the fastest jungle clear, more as to like Chimera in Paragon is so dumb because you could just sit there on the camp, not have to do anything and just regen all day long, which I didn't really, I didn't like that 
too much um i really preferred it the the other junglers where you had to kind of rubber band and you had to knew how know how to move in order to clear those jungles i'd like to see them take that a step further though and like a lot of a lot of ranged abilities and stuff and i think that's what they're going to go with i don't know if that'll be like that for the pre-alpha though i know we've seen that to an extent with what we've seen of the wyverns and atropos mm -hmm. and that they have multiple attacks and like for the, the tail whip that the wyverns have that we've seen a couple times you have to be further back to not get hit by that and then move forward. So hopefully that translates into the smaller camps as well. But I completely agree with you. I think that that mechanic would be super valuable to have. And especially the higher you get up in the skill levels, the more prevalent it'll become on being able to do those things and make that skill disparity much wider. Similar to the way I think about it is Severog in Paragon. Being able to run the camps around in a circle whittling them down so he can get one Q off without taking right. a full damage from just standing there the whole time. So I think that's a, a great way to, a great thing to like look for in terms of the devs designing these camps and the fights themselves. What I want to see from you is I want to see a jungle speed run. I want to see <laughs> a video from you after Ethereal is out of clearing the jungle as fast as possible. That's I'll, what I want to see. I'll start the Ethereal jungle speed running community for sure. We'll just go through... <laughs> Everybody who can clear the fastest and then world records are going to show up and then we'll have to beat the. Oh, yeah, I'm so down for that. But you can only yeah, do it once amazing. per game because it's got to be that initial clear. The first clear is the only one that counts. <laughs> so you have 40 <laughs> minutes between runs because you have to play the rest of the game. Right. 100%. I'm down. I'll do that. 100 I'll add it to my list right after this, <laughs> this video. <laughs> <laughs> Juggle speed runs. Love it. Um, but uh. the, I guess in addition to the camp locations and the creatures... We know of something like they're like open camps, I guess. The weird structures that we see on the outer side of the side yeah, lanes. The, the squares are you yeah. talking about? We know that those have to be jungle camps because those apply to the count to get the 18 per side. So my guess is that those are probably going to be the buffs that we're going to see. The side lanes have three and that's why that middle one is shared on both side lanes. And then the middle lane will have one on each corner. Um uh across from each other not gonna be there's yeah. two on the void lane and three on fire and three on ice my guess is we're gonna see those being the buffs that the void lane will have blue buff and with four buffs that they've mentioned it makes sense void lane will have blue buff and then fire and ice will both have red purple and green buffs what do you think so, like those buffs that's a lot of buffs be? yeah um uh, my guess is that purple and green are similar to like river buffs in Paragon. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I don't know for sure, honestly. And the interesting thing is in their jungle blog post, I was rereading it today. They specifically mention the buffs from Wyverns and Atropos separately from the buffs for the camps. So even though there's right. a purple buff, I don't necessarily think that that's going to be Atropos's buff. Right. I think, um, and, and when you're looking at this, a lot of a lot of the developers, the original developers for UG played a lot of Smite and League of Legends. So if you're thinking in Paragon terms, you're probably going to be wrong. If you're thinking more along the lines of what the Smite and, and League of Legends buffs do, that's probably more right up their alley for Ethereal. So I'm a little out of my element with this because I played just a little, I play a touch of Smite here and there and never really play touch League of Legends. So... My guess for red and blue is they're going to be kind of the generic red and blue buffs. Yeah, I think Smite and League have them very similar, if not the same. That there's a damage over time on red buff, plus some health regen. And then there's a mana regeneration and cooldown reduction on blue buff. I think those are safe bets for both of those. Especially because I know the Ethereal team, a lot of the GDA people play League. So right. I really expect them to be similar there. Green could just be a... Green could be like we saw in Extra Life the little health thing that we got that was just a burst of health yeah at once i could see the green buff being that or it could just be a shield like we've seen in other mobas purple i truly have no idea i have no clue what that could be and anything is up for grabs at that point take us off track a little bit what game was it that decided amongst all gamers that mana is blue <laughs> 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 Where did that come from? Like, that, it's just accepted that blue means mana and mana regen. I think if I had to bet, I would say it was probably Diablo or WoW. 
The, uh, Diablo was exactly what I was thinking. The original Diablo. Yeah. Because in my head, <laughs> when I think Diablo, I can definitely picture that blue mana bar. Or bubble, right? But I'm sure there was some RPGs back in the day where the mana was blue or something like that, too. I don't know. Yeah, let us know in the comments, I guess, if you know better than, like, Diablo 1 being the origination of blue as mana. Um, I never thought about that, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, let's get back to the ethereal track. <laughs> Just had to, had to take a little detour there. Yeah, back to the uh, official ethereal the podcast. Your... Oh, go ahead, go ahead. What's back that? to the official ethereal podcast. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about your favorite subject, the obelisk. Oh my god. Uh, I I don't know that I have any singular theory that I think is more prevalent than another. Mm -hmm. um, I think it could easily be a King of the Hill type place that your team gets a slight boost in gold per minute or gold when you kill minions or whatever when you control that King of the Hill point. It could be a teleporter. They keep telling us to look at the lore when they keep like teasing me about it in their discord they're like look at the lore the lore says and the only place in the lore that we have so far that talks about the obelisk is marina's lore that makes it sound like a teleporter mm -hmm. and so and that's it, what i think it very well easily could be a teleporter to where i don't know um yeah i because there's not another one on the map so it's not an a to b teleportation right it's some caveat to you go somewhere else depending on i guess how you enter it or what or something maybe that's how you get to the core you can only get to the core if you have the uh, <laughs> obelisk unlocked you have to kill all the towers then go to the obelisk then shoot over to the base <laughs> to... <laughs> no i think um or the elder we shouldn't say core it's a we know right. this the big bruiser elder guy um but my theory, I mentioned this last week, I, I really think that taking the obelisk is going to unlock more portals. Mm -hmm. I definitely think it has something to do with portals because of the lore. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Marina, Marina is in charge of watching over an obelisk that activates and teleports her to Kaminara Forest. And then her and Kalia work together to activate the one in Kaminara Forest so that they can get back to, she can get back to to um wherever the hell she's from agora <laughs> uh, <laughs> did i say agora that's paragon uh i know where she's from too yikes uh al gore yes she's from al gore i can't think of like the the place that she's from but I, the, the weird Cerulean thing is singing? in her lore it sounds like the obelisk activating is relatively destructive to the area right that it like sucks in terrain like as it's teleporting things that that seems uh, crazy to me something i just thought of what if it's an Atropos dunk? Uh, I, I do what? And, it's, and when you kill Atropos, you get the buff and you have to dunk it in obel in the obelisk to activate. Oh. <laughs> I would love that. I, I really hope it's that now, even though I know it's, I'm pretty sure it's not. I miss Orb Prime dunk so bad. I want it back. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it functions like uh, one of those ring toss things that you give babies. <laughs> <laughs> like you get the the top ring from Atropos and then you got to throw it up on top of the I mean the uh, you want the true tinfoil hat there's three rings three phases to Atropos I mean where are we Ooh, going maybe hey. I figured it out <laughs> you made the connection <laughs> and even now Yuji's sitting there shaking their head going like dear god it's not that difficult I don't know how he's figured <laughs> it out how he hasn't figured it out yet <laughs> uh, but I think that leads well into the global objectives being Atropos and the Wyverns what do you think they're going to their benefits are going to be for the team? Well, I think Atropos is going to be a team wide buff. Okay. Definitely a team wide buff. They did a long, long time ago. They did a uh, a poll within the community to see whether people liked having a buff better or having a debuff for the enemy team. It was over almost overwhelming. People want to feel more powerful and they want a buff for themselves rather than a debuff for the enemy team. So I think it's going to be some, I think it's going to buff minions too. I think it's going to be just a whole map-wide, team-wide um, buff for everybody is what Atropos will do. As far as Ice and Fire Wyvern, no clue what you got. I, I agree with you. I think Atropos is going to be kind of the stereotypical Orb Prime, Baron, Rashan. All the MOBAs have their, their big bad that typically gives the same kind of buff. So I think Phase 3 certainly is going to be that. I think phase one and two for Atropos are probably just going to be smaller versions of that. Um, in that, like, you'll get, 
if you kill phase one, you get person, whoever de deals the final blow is the only person that gets that buff. And then if you right. kill phase two, only the present members get that buff. And then phase three is just a global, everybody on your team gets the buff. Something among those lines is what I would expect for the phases themselves. For the Wyverns, I'd imagine that their buff is going to be tied to their thematic in some way. So if you kill Ice Wyvern, you get maybe your abilities or basic attacks slow for a percentage. And then if you kill the Fire Wyvern, your basic attacks or abilities deal dot damage over time for a, for a certain amount of time. That would and be grant fun. gold to your team. Uh, we haven't heard of anything like a favor system like Fault has, so I doubt it's going to be anything like that, that you just inherently get stronger by killing the Wyverns and Atropos. But so I really think that you're going to see some kind of unique buff to each Wyvern that just promotes your team or that lane forward. Could you imagine if they had a buff that gave everybody team wide flight? I would love that. That'd be great. Everybody's <laughs> a UAV now. Everybody fly around, see where everyone else is on the map. I don't think that's possible with the setup, though, with because your was it your shift activates your class ability. Yeah. So that would replace everybody's class ability. You may not want that. <laughs> no wall breaking for you. Must fly. Here we go. You just get the V formation over the top of the map flying over. I love it. The flying V. Um, so something they other they also mention in their jungle blog post is mini buffs. Again, separate from the Wyverns and Atropos and separate from the regular buffs that they list. They say that they have camps that grant mini buffs. What? <laughs> to I me, don't know. we're getting so now we have three global buffs from or the or semi global with the Wyverns and Atropos. We have four regular buffs. And then we have an indeterminate amount of mini buffs around the map. How many status effects can you give people in the form of a buff? Like, <laughs> I don't know how many things we can do. You get an extra 0.2 HP regen. You get an extra 0.2 mana regen. You get, like, I don't know where that would come in in any way, shape, or form. I think there'll definitely be some sort of speed boost buff in there somewhere. I could see that, especially for the void lane, the void jungler. And them running around from side to side trying to get all those camps for themselves. Yeah. I can definitely see that. Um, but yeah, mini buffs are an interesting thing that I'm not sure how that's going to work out. And it could have just been a a faux pas in the writing. that they In mini buffs and regular buffs, they really are talking about the same thing. But they separated right. them for whatever reason. I guess we could ask Mud. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, she probably wouldn't tell us. But what do you expect to see for the Sky Jungle or the Skungle? Sorry. All my Skunglers. Here we go. I don't think there's going to be a Sky Jungle anymore. I, th I think that's gone. I think that's out for now. Maybe it'll get added in later, but I, I think that's just gone for now. We, did, we haven't seen any platform. Like what we used to see was some platforms sort of situated in the sky off the lanes. I thought those would be for the Skungle, but... Yeah, I don't think there's going to be a skungle anymore. I think there's just going to be sky. There's going to be skunglers, but no skungle. Yep, I completely agree with you. Everything we've seen doesn't show any sign of there being a sky jungle, other than the floating lanes themselves, um, and other than the sky junglers being able to fly. That's not really all we have in terms of the skungle. So right. we have skunglers, just no skungle. <laughs> Words yep. I never thought I would say in the same sentence. <laughs> Um, <laughs> the other thing they've mentioned in their, their map that I think kind of pertains to the jungle is the cannons. We've seen nothing of these cannons. Yeah. I other think the than cannons the mention. Are gone. I think that's out. I, that might be as well, but it seems like it was just so recent that we heard about them. Uh, true. That it's kind of the, we didn't know about them before that. We do. We don't know anything about them after. Why make the comment in between of the cannons at all if they're gone? Yeah. Or if they're even considered to be potentially gone. So I don't know what's going on with that. But maybe the obelisk and the cannons are one thing now. There's a game mode in League of Legends. I can't remember the name of the mode naturally now. But at, at your spawn, you have a little cannon that you can jump into and you can shoot yourself anywhere on the map. So there's the potential that that's what the obelisk is going to act as. 
is that you when you step into the obelisk the mini map comes up and you select an area on the map and it'll launch you to that area over time that would be cool it fits the kind of teleportation theme it replaces the need for the cannons uh gets travel rotations between lanes becomes much easier when you're not in base using the teleporters themselves i think it fills a lot of the needs i'm just not sure that that's what the obelisk actually is is the problem that's the best theory so far that it acts as a teleporter to anywhere on the map i think that'd be really fun um i guess it, it, as long as you had some way to capture it like as long as it isn't just always functional mm -hmm. like there needs to be some sort of mechanic where you're where you have to fight for that obelisk i think i completely agree or there has to be a cooldown between uses and make maybe make it a team cooldown instead of a global cooldown because if right i'm the mid lane noxus or the void lane noxus and i go grab the obelisk it shouldn't make the mid lane uh malaya incapable of following me right but i shouldn't want to be i shouldn't be able to pile my whole team into the obelisk and all five launch somewhere else and <laughs> we're all here hey party in the top in the uh ice lane yeah so yeah it'll be interesting to see what they do with that well in the lore they're a time thing like the obelisks are supposed to go off on a rotation like a timed thing so maybe Ooh. at certain times the obelisk becomes available Active. for use yeah you get a minute window that you can go use the obelisk to get anywhere on the map i could like i like that a lot actually that'd be fun there we go we are forming a a actual coherent theory about what the obelisk <laughs> potentially is welcome uh, into the fold mangoose we <laughs> maybe maybe we are, maybe we've already stumbled upon it Who knows? <laughs> i'm sure at this point man oh dear um we talked briefly about open camps already uh, yeah I, they've got to be buffs i really don't know what else they could be yeah but other than that anything else about the jungle that you wanted to to talk about or see i think i'm good you ready to switch into the next topic yeah absolutely monetization so, uh, we're gonna be... what's that monetization the yeah best we're topic. gonna talk about how how they're gonna monetize the game they're well not how they're gonna monetize the game our theories of how they could best monetize the game i guess i should say mm -hmm. um Real quick, before we get I into really it, think... before we What's get up, into it, UG, 10%. If you use any of these ideas before they actually are ideas in your head, <laughs> if we're helping you with marketing, the official podcast should be more official in getting 10%. Thank you. Okay, bye. <laughs> um, anyway, continue. <laughs> I think obviously skins, they need to they need to lean into their strengths. And their strength right now is their character models. Yep. They have really good looking myths. They have really good looking myth skins, and that's what they need to lean into. I think they could sell the shit out of those skins if that's the way they wanted to make money. Um, they got like their their animations aren't great, aren't really up to par uh, as yet. Um, so I don't think you could really sell emotes and stuff all that well as much as you could sell skins. And then like their map, I, their map kind of. I, I like their original map, like the map that they showed us years ago. I really like that map. And the new map, I don't care for as much. Um, it looks like they used Quixel Mega Scans to do just an overlay of whatever, and it just doesn't look natural. Um, first time I saw Quixel was with Phoenix Rising, and they made it look good because they made separate pathways. Just everything is covered by this weird camo that it makes it look like your footsteps are just kind of gliding over top of the map and i don't know how i ended up talking about the map so much when we're talking about merchandising but i don't know it's been on my mind a lot i don't, I don't care for I'll, I'll the map seems a little too bright i like a lot of the parts of the map but the ground itself is too smooth yeah and it's got this weird overlay on top of it when it could if they just simply put gr like just gravel or just a pathway and then that stuff on the side it would look a lot better right now it's just everything has that i, I don't know i don't care for it yep i i actually completely agree with you i was pleasantly surprised to be sure but when the map was revealed and it was that different from what we heard before i was surprised that there wasn't more backlash about it uh, yeah because it was fundamentally different from what we've known the map to be for so long 
And there are reasons behind why it changed, and I understand that. And I'm not saying I hate this new map by any stretch. I think it's got its own potential the way it is. But yeah. and part of it's a a almost nostalgia thing, right? You and I have been following this for years, and for most of that time, the map has looked one way in our head. Right? So the, so ideas, thoughts, the whole nine yards have all been surrounding that idea. And then it completely changed. Yeah. And so it just felt like a weird sudden shift kind of disconnecting between the two things. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I'm just glad, I'm glad I got that off my chest. <laughs> <laughs> but it's they just need to change the ground. They change that overlay on the ground. I think they'll be fine. Yeah, I agree. You can really notice it in some of the spotlights that it they feel floaty off the ground when they're running. Yeah. yeah. Um, but your point about skins is absolutely right. Right now, that's the, that's the selling point for them in terms of a monetization scheme is their skins. And I think something they can do to help kind of market to their social medias is something that I know League does. and I think a lot of other games do as well, but I don't know for sure, is they make specific social media skins that if you follow and like their page on whatever it is, you get this basic skin for whatever character it is, right? Right. So if you want to make your Facebook page get the Malaya skin, you give Malaya a Facebook skin or something, right? Or some generic tier one skin that just for liking the Facebook page and, and saying and linking your accounts, you're able to get that skin. Yeah. That gets so much people, so many people on those pages, liking, sharing the whole nine yards that it puts your game out there in front of everybody to get more people into the Kickstarter, to get more people buying skins, the whole nine yards. They have a completely new avenue of selling the skins too, which is with the familiars. If they sell mm -hmm. familiar skins, that could that could make them a ton of money. And that and that could be maybe like what you were talking about with the following on Facebook and stuff, that that could be a familiar skin. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be just a, a myth skin. And people that just want to collect everything they can will still follow on Facebook or what have you. Absolutely. I would, hundred percent. And should the game ever get to a point of having a competitive scene, you can add more things like that. Like you, the, you can get people their favorite team, like a jersey on one of the familiars or right. whatever it is. The little things that you can do, charge $5 and you're done. Like it's just, it's a very simple monetization scheme. Now, if you're greedy about it, we'll be the first to call you on it. But, <laughs> <laughs> but there's other, there's lots of potential for them as well. I know when we had Mud on the show back in like week two, um, <laughs> which, yeah, let's real quick. We're in week 32 of this show and we're still waiting for the game to come out. <laughs> oh dear. But when we talked to Mud, she mentioned they would have a battle pass or some etherealized version of a battle pass, which I think is great. We recently talked about it on Untitled Rant Show. That I think I think battle passes are a great thing for games to put in to reward their community, but also get monetization back in return. That they can do as long as they don't give some sort of in-game advantage. I'm I'm all for it. Yep, I I completely agree. Uh, cosmetic only, maybe some in-game currency for it, right? Th those kind of things, I think are are definitely valuable in that regard. Uh, they've mentioned loot boxes are off the table. So yep. we don't have to Thank worry God. about that at all. Super great. Happy <laughs> to hear that. They can release uh, merch. That's another big one, right? Yeah. And, and I mean, we have shirts from them that we've been told they were planning to release, or at least the one I have. I know you have a UG team shirt, but I have the Zero Iran shirt that I'm, of course, not wearing now that I'm talking about it. But that they were talking about selling those. At least those ones were limited, I think they said, limited edition when they come out. But I'm sure they have plans for other merch that they're going to sell. Yeah. Which and is the, helpful. the body pillows that we get 10% a of? huge cut up. Yeah. Yeah. At least 10%. <laughs> <laughs> uh, something you mentioned here, you, you got written down on our little, we got a little tracking sheet for what we want to talk about was how do we expect to purchase these items? I think that's a great point. Just direct purchase or in-game currency. I fucking hate in-game currency. I hate <laughs> it so much. I hope. I, I imagine that's probably what they'll do because that's what everybody does. I, I very much dislike it because, I don't know, um, Raven was talking about this when we were playing Fault the other day. The new Kalari skin 
costs like I, I don't know the exact numbers, but like ten dollars gets you like ten thousand coins. The new Kalari skin costs uh, like eleven thousand coins yep. <laughs> or something like that. So if you want the new Kalari skin, you gotta buy twenty dollars worth of the fucking coins instead of yeah. I I would I just want to pay. Just tell me how much it costs in real people money. Let me pay that real people money and get what I want. Don't force me to buy fucking in-game currency that's going to sit around and I'm going to have like 200 extra. And then I know why people do it. It's to encourage people to buy the more currency, but it's one of those things from a business perspective makes total sense. And I understand why they do it from a consumer perspective. It's terrible. And I hate everything <laughs> about it, right? Like <laughs> the fact that you buy 200 more of the currency more than you need. And then you're just going to have that 200 sitting there to incentivize you to buy more. Right. It's predatory in my mind. I would love if we don't see that from them. I expect we will see that from them. But, but I agree with you. We're going to see an in-game currency. Uh, I highly, highly doubt that they do direct purchase in any way. Um, yeah. Maybe once they hit like Steam or the Epic Game Store, where I know Steam has that system built in that you can spend exactly how much the thing costs. Maybe assuming they actually ever do get to that nice. point. But I think initially we're definitely going to see just an in-game premium currency at 5, 10, 20, 35, whatever increments they decide to do. Yeah. The only thing I like in-game currency for is when they do it like giveaways for the in-game currency. Mm -hmm. Like that's, that's kind of nice. Cause then you could spend that card instead of giving away a skin for a myth that you don't even use, you can get in-game currency from like a Twitch giveaway or some shit. And then, you can use that currency to buy a skin for a myth that you actually do use. So, yeah, or, or yeah, you some, finding some way for me to earn skins over playtime, right? D don't force me to have to buy the currency, but if I have to grind for thirty hours to get one skin, I'm kind of okay with that. Yeah, uh, Fault does that to an extent, right? I think theirs is a little too grindy in some cases, but they mm -hmm. do that to an extent where you can buy any of the epic made skins or regular in-game currency that you just earn by playing games. Now, it'll take you an eternity to grind that money out. Right. But you can do it. It is possible. So there's an there. I think there's a, a positive and negative to both ends of the spectrum. But giving me some way to exchange that, if I get a skin in a battle pass or something that I want to try and put it towards something else, let me do something, please. <laughs> yeah. And something I would love to see in their battle pass that I've seen in some games and not others is giving. So if let's say I have to spend $10 for the battle pass and for easy, easy sake of numbers, that equals a thousand ethereal currency. Right. In that battle pass of a hundred levels or whatever you're going to make it, give me a thousand currency back. And do it over time. Don't do it all at once. But like I earn 100 here, 100 here, 100 here. Right? Throughout the entire thing. If I choose not to spend it on anything. And I just and I just keep the 1,000 that I get. I can spend that on the next battle pass. Yeah. So I essentially earn the next battle pass for free. By completing all the levels of this one. Or I can spend my 1,000 ethereal currency on a Malaya skin. And then I still have to pay the $10 to get into the next battle pass. Yeah, it's, I like it's that. rewarding your players for playing through to completion of that battle pass by giving them the next one for free or giving them a skin that they want. And, and depending on the player's choice, they either have to spend the money on the skin or spend the money on the next battle pass. Right. I think that that's it, a perfectly, it, perfectly acceptable method to do that. It keeps people playing. Even if you're not making money off of that person that's playing, you need to maintain that balance nowadays. You need to have a way to make money but also a way to keep people playing because a lot of people aren't going to play a game unless it's free. Mm -hmm. So that that would keep people that would keep a high player base of people that are still playing for free, and it would they, and they can still participate in the battle passes if they if they want to. But it would still give people you know incentive to actually spend money on the game so that they can maintain their game and sustain the company. So yeah, absolutely, I like that. I like and that idea. As of right now, all of this is pure speculation on our part. We don't know oh God, anything yeah. official. Despite being the official Ethereal podcast, <laughs> uh, we, 
we don't know any of this information officially about the game of what they're going to do or anything like that. So something else I listed on here is announcer packs or voice packs for myths. Mm -hmm. um, Dota has them. I think Smite has them. I don't know if Hots has them, but I think that's a avenue they could easily go down the path of doing. Oh yeah, is making announcer packs for myths for myths specifically, or announcer packs for the general announcer of the game. For Daniel Hodge. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I mean, it, Try has since moved on, but that was a big thing Try did for League of Legends was create voice packs for the the champions in League. Right. So I'd and lots of people love those voice packs. So I'd imagine you could easily translate that into creating voice packs for your myths, and it would people would buy them. Uh, yeah, absolutely, hundred um, percent. I think this kind of unless you had anything else in particular to talk about leads us into the Kickstarter. Um, I think it, I just generally, it is a good platform for them to use to kind of kickstart pun intended, um, their game, right. To get the funds, right. to get it off the ground for server costs, to pay their people to, cause most of them are still volunteer, right? Oh, yeah. Like that's, that's a huge thing. Being able to pay, pay their people, um, it's going to depend on what they set for their goal and how quickly they meet it that it all happens. So we're going to have to wait. I think that's how we're going to get our keys. Our... Yeah. For uh, early access, yeah. So yeah, I, by no means am I saying we should talk about the particulars of anything. <laughs> but I think just in general, that's another way. If they vastly surpass their goal, we could see a lot of this other stuff start coming faster because they can pay hire more people, get things in the works faster, the whole nine yards. Right. Yeah. Um, the thing that I I don't remember if they've mentioned in the past or not, but it wouldn't surprise me, is getting a mocap studio back up and running for their animations. Them losing their mocap studio was huge against them. Yeah. Because they were counting on a, a lot of that stuff. Massive blow to the to to ethereal. Yeah. So I think that at least personally, granted I don't know the inner workings of the of the company at the moment, but I think that would should be a high priority list of trying to get some either better animations or that mocap studio back up and running and get a lot of those things back in the works of making right. everything look fully fleshed out and coming out of an alpha stage, you know? And I definitely want to see a lot of the people that have been working passionately on this project get paid, mm -hmm. get, get some money in their pocket. Absolutely. Lots they of people are wearing rewarded. multiple hats right now. And so they, they definitely deserve some something in return whatever it may yeah. be indeed all right i think that's about all i had Did you have anything else you wanted to cover i think that's it for me as well okay right next on week, anything we'll more tons of information wait, wait, to go wait, about wait. i'm sure oh yeah yeah next, <laughs> next week's gonna be a big one <laughs> uh anything you want to plug but just the youtube releasing more videos streaming more often the whole nine yards what about you mangoose yeah, just YouTube. I've been doing a lot more videos than, than normal. Uh, set up memberships that are, should be going live soon. Ooh. I was kind of leery about doing that, but I think I finally am going to do that. So you can kind of sub to the channel just like it's Twitch and get emojis and all that bullshit. But I'm not, I don't know. We'll see how that goes. That's cool, though. That's awesome. Well, let's hope yeah, so. Yeah, go, go member. Go memberize yourself. Go memberize. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Go become a member. That's the word. Yeah, that's the phrase I was looking for. I don't know how it works they, on YouTube. They, they, gotta, they gotta come up with a cool thing for that. I can't say subscribe because that's already a thing and it doesn't. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, yeah, so whatever. Weird. Not the point. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But I think that's going to be it for this week. Um, May 22nd, was it? At, at 6 p.m. Central. ESP? Central. 6 p.m. Central time. Yep. Okay is the the live stream for the jungle with skifter and a special guest uh join us as we watch that i'm sure jelly you're having a live viewing party for that too, yeah right? absolutely i'll be watching it live and then breaking down everything then thereafter so it may be a <laughs> long night for me right like it depends how long they go right right um, so join us for that stream and uh also join us as we enter the ether man -goo!